Hello and welcome to this Heritage Open Day special here from the Watercrest Line. Now with a theme of astounding inventions, well, there's only one topic we could really do, because where would we be without our steam locomotives? Now, if you have watched of our previous videos, you'll know that we've covered what the drive and firemen do to make this thing move, but one thing we are yet to do is take a literal dive into the belly of the beast to see just what makes a steam locomotive tick. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're going in. Welcome to the Watercrest Line. Hello folks, welcome to the Watercrest Line. My name's Will and I'm a fireman here and also make the videos. Now, we're gonna show you just what goes inside a steam locomotive. So without further ado, let's go and dive into a tender. Now to start off, essentially, in simple terms, the way a steam locomotive works, you heat water, boil it, turn it into steam, and then use that steam to move the locomotive. Of course, it's a bit more complicated than that, but that's the first stage. So the first thing we need is water, and crucially, we need extra supplies of the stuff, and that's why we are in here. Of course, where is here? On the outside, we're currently here. This is the tender tank, specifically a brand new one, which has been built for one of our locomotives, number 75079, a standard four class. This tank is where the water sits, and it can take 4,725 gallons of water. Now, that's gonna be quite heavy, so it's gonna really slosh about, which is what all of these are. These are baffles, or bulkheads, and the idea is, is to slow the water down and stop it really sloshing about. Above me, uh, namely here, is where the coal is. And this engine can take about six tons of coal. Impressive stuff. So once we've got all of this, what do we actually do with it? Welcome to the beating heart of a locomotive. This is where the coal ends up, the fire intensity, the roar that makes a locomotive work. Or more specifically, I am here. You see? Hello. This is the firebox, the beating heart of a locomotive. The fireman will shovel coal from the tender through the firehole door and it'll land where I'm sitting now. In here, the coal is put to work where we extract all that heat and temperatures in here can go up to 1500 degrees Celsius, more than enough to boil a bit of water. Now the water itself is actually all around us at the moment, surrounding the firebox in a jacket of water. And if you go further down towards the end, those are the tubes or the flue tubes. All of the hot gases from here flow through those flue tubes through more water space and then get exhausted out the chimney. And that's the smoke you see. The bit I've got my arm on now is called the brick arch. And essentially this is put in to make sure all the hot combustible volatiles travel a little bit further. So they come up combining with everything else before being sent through the flue tubes to make sure we get the most out of that coal. Now this would also heat up as well, add a bit like a, like a winter jacket. And um, well, on the line of winter, locomotives after a day of not having a fire in it would still be quite warm. So the test used to be in the winter, uh, that before you would chuck any oily, flamey rags in to start lighting up the engine, you'd shout to make sure no one was sleeping on top of here. Otherwise, they might get a bit barbecued. But anyway, once we've burnt the coal, where does it go then? Now, for those of you guys who have ever made a bonfire or have a coal fire in your house, you know that once you've burned the fuel, it doesn't just disappear into thin air, there's ash left over. And that's where this comes into it. This is called the ash pan hopper. The fire itself sits on these. These are called the fingers. And essentially, these slot together like those and form a complete bed for the coal to sit on. They have gaps in the bars to let the oxygen come up through, so you get good combustion of the coal. And then once the coal is spent and broken down, the ash will fall through into this. This is the hopper, or the ash pan as we call it. The ash pan will then hold it until we, the locomotive crew, empty it at the start and the end of the day. Not the most glamorous job, but someone needs to do it. 
If we didn't have this ash pan, then hot ash would just fall straight onto track, which understandably would cause a lot of damage and is a massive fire hazard. So that's the fire talked about. What about the water? This here is the boiler. On the outside of the steam engine, I'm currently here. Now this is currently in our boiler shop, being overhauled. Behind me is what we call the inner firebox. Essentially here is surrounded by water, a big water jacket. Through here, these holes, they carry tubes. If you had a look into a boiler fully fitted, all you'd see are tubes up and down here. And they're carrying all the hot gases from one end all the way to the other. This boiler is for Canadian Pacific. It's a Merchant Navy class, one of the most powerful engines the Southern Railway ever built. And it's currently being overhauled here at Ropley by our team. So once we've made the steam, how do we actually put it to good use? Well, that's where all of this comes into it. For this, we've come back to Cheltenham, one of our running locomotives. At this end, we have the cylinder. Inside here is a piston that shuttles backwards and forwards, being moved by the steam. Now that forwards and backwards motion you get directly from the piston, well, the arrangement of rods down here transfer that into rotational motion, and that actually drives the wheels. Now, in reality, it's a lot more complicated than that, and frankly, this video is far too short for that. But if you would like to see just how a driver drives a locomotive and how a fireman fires it, well, don't worry, we've already done a video for that. We might set one of our firing instructors and sent him out with a few cameras, and we'll post a link in the description below. Now, pretty much all steam locomotives have at least two cylinders, one either side, but some, like this one, have an extra hidden away. Well, we're now underneath the beast where all the motion is. And you can find this, this is a third cylinder. Just like the two on the outside, this provides drive to the main wheels. So we have the piston behind me, the con rod, which converts the forward and backwards motion of the piston into rotational motion. And that helps drive the engine, makes it even more powerful. Now you can get some locomotives that have four cylinders, so two on the outside and two on the inside as well. Understandably, it gets, um, it gets quite cramped underneath here, especially when the driver has to come in every morning to oil up everything that moves. So what happens afterwards? Where does this all end up? And finally, that leads us to the front, the smoke box, the face of a locomotive. Now behind me, we have the boiler shoes, which we saw earlier, and the shoes that go inside them, well, that's called a superheater. Essentially, you take the steam from the boiler, you then feed it through the tubes, back through the big flue tubes, and that superheats it. Essentially, it makes the locomotive more efficient. Once it's used, it then goes through these pipes down into the cylinders, as we saw earlier, the cylinders used for steam, and once we exhaust it, it goes up through here. This is the blast pipe. It shoots up past the spark arrestor, and that's when you get your distinctive chuff noise. Now everything around here is currently filthy and ashy because that's what happens in a smoke box. It gets filled up. So the fireman and the cleaner will shovel it out at the end of the day. So there you are folks, front to back of a locomotive from the inside to see just how it works. If you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you can guys can come down to the Watercrest line to see this for yourself sometime. Apart from that, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.